I was one of the very first visitors to Wider uh, in 1985. Amartya Sen in, uh, invited me, uh, invited me to, uh, to join his, his group uh, the, when they were working. And then, as you, as you say, I've been, I've been a member of many Wider uh, research projects, uh, and I've been a director of Wider research projects, and now I'm on the, I'm on the board of Wider. And it is an interesting question as to what is, and I mean, the, uh, it's clear that Wider has had an impact. There's no question about that. Uh, and, we can, we, and we can sort of do an analysis of different periods and the different types of impact and so on. But uh, uh, for example, I think, I think in the 1980s, uh, when there was a particular dominance of the international financial institutions uh, in, the international, in, the, in the global discourse on, uh, on economic development, uh, I think it was important to have an alternative credible voice uh, and indeed this I think was the vision of the founders of WIDER of Amartya Sen and Marty Atisari and others to provide some competition so to speak in the market for ideas. Uh, but, but we are now 30 years on from that and one, can, uh, one might argue that in fact there has been a significant change in the international financial institutions, uh, perhaps not as much as one might want but nevertheless significant evolution to the extent that the that one of, the main, uh, one of the main supporters of the notion that inequality is bad for growth is actually the International Monetary Fund. And some of the, some of the uh, cutting edge research in this area is actually coming from the, from the IMF. So that gives you a sense that the terrain has shifted. Uh, and perhaps the, the rationale of 30 years ago in terms of providing an alternative to the IFIs is not necessarily the rationale now for wider. It should be providing uh, new ways of looking at things. I think that's the way to formulate Wider's, uh, Wider's mission. Uh, in the 1980s, that meant an alternative to the IFIs. But now I think it means, uh, in, in my view at any rate, it means staying two steps ahead of the development discourse and asking the question, what's coming, round, what's coming down the pike? What are the issues that will become important in, uh, in five years' time, in 10 years' time? and using, using WIDER's convening power, using its credibility to, to set the stage uh, for the development community to address those, uh, those issues. Uh, I think uh, uh, a good example of this is, the, is that WIDER's last research program, uh, uh, three, five years ago, uh, was built on the triple crises of, uh, of finance and, and food and, uh, and energy. Uh, and I think those were the issues of that time. Uh, which needed urgent attention. And I think WIDER is a nimble enough organization to say, okay, we're going, this is what we're going to focus on in the next few years. Of course, those issues haven't gone away, but every, every three to five years, WIDER then needs to, uh, uh, needs to look ahead again and see, see what are the issues that are coming down the pipe. Again, to give you an example of this, uh, two years ago, uh, WIDER organized a, uh, one of WIDER's big conferences was on the role of behavioral economics. Uh, uh, on behavioral economics and its interaction with poverty uh, and how the new methods and new perspectives of behavioral economics uh, are relevant or not for the developing country context. Uh, it, was a, it was a very big conference and the major, uh, uh, the, leader, the, the thought leaders in that area were present here uh, at WIDER. And a special issue of the Journal of the Review of Income and Wealth is coming out uh, out of the best papers that were presented uh, at that conference, including papers by, uh, by leaders like Sendil Mullainathan and Dean Carlin. Uh, and just, just to say that two years ago, WIDER held that conference, and the, next World, the, World Bank's ne the World Bank's next World Development Report is actually called the Behavioral and Social Foundations of Development, with a big focus on behavioral uh, economics. Uh, another example I would say, take, take an example from 10 years ago, uh, when WIDER launched a very big program on, uh, on, uh, uh, on agglomeration and inequalities and urbanization. And sure enough, uh, the 2009 World Development Report of the World Bank was precisely on those, on those sorts of issues. So I give those two as examples where I think WIDER is a, is a, should be and is a nimble enough organization, uh, small but uh, active and proactive, uh, always with the, with, on the lookout for what's, what's coming down the pike, uh, to actually to ha to set itself the task of big, of defining the development agenda in five years time, what it's likely to be in five years time, seven years time, ten years time. My own view is I think the, the behavioral economics uh, dimension is going to be important. 
the, uh, the, 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 the profession itself, the profession of economics is being turned upside down by this, by this perspective. Uh, what we're taught in our Econ 101 classes uh, is, clearly, is clearly being shown empirically uh, to be not valid uh, uh, anymore. Uh, Nobel Prizes have been given for work in this area. The, uh, the Clark Medal of the American Economic Association has been given for this area. The MacArthur Genius Award has been given for this area. So the question now, I think, how does, how does this affect impact development economics is the, is the classic question. I think the second issue, uh, a second issue, there are many, many of these things. And I think in some sense, this is an obvious one. And, uh, uh, but I, uh, that it's clear to me that, that rising inequality uh, uh, is going to be an aspect, has been and is going to be, an, has been for the last uh, 10, 15 years and will be an aspect of, of the global economy uh, over, the, over the next 15 years or so. Uh, so I think uh, 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 an, an assessment of that, uh, an analysis of it, particularly, let's say, from the African, con uh, from the African perspective, uh, and also uh, what sorts of policies might, might, be, uh, might address the, these rising inequalities. And also, as I said, not, not just, although it, it, that it's important, but not just thinking in terms of conventional ways of looking at inequality, uh, in the usual way we economists look at in terms of interpersonal inequality, uh, inequality of incomes between persons, but inequality of incomes between broad groups. And let me say again that actually this is an area where five years ago, again, wider did some of the, uh, uh, some of the initial thinking in a, uh, in, a pro in, a, in a wider project. So I think wider is well placed to, to address these, these issues. So there's an example of how the concern with rising inequality the concern with inequality across broadly defined groups, the concern with how people perceive inequality uh, links into how people perceive, uh, how, uh, how people behave in reality as opposed to in the textbooks uh, of economics. And that, that combination of events, I think, uh, that combination is, is an, would be an example of something that, uh, that is surely coming down the pike, in, in my view, uh, in, in the next five to 10 years. And I think wider as, as an organization devoted to, uh, uh, to research and to policy research uh, in development economics uh, should, should be addressing those issues and indeed is addressing those, is addressing those issues and uh, is, I, I believe should keep itself nimble enough to be able to address not just those issues but in five years time if those change then to be able to shift quickly to, uh, to take up the issues as they arise. Mm -hmm.